something that I avoided. Uh, there's somebody uh, yelling uh, loser from a car. <laughs> maybe it's at me. Maybe it's, it's like you. Attention. No, he said, are you that Wuhan loser? But people <laughs> crave attention. You can see that. That's So, I mean, social media allows people to, like myself to take advantage of it. But, again, this was not premeditated. This was something that happened in the spur of the moment. And uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it again. It was in poor taste. David Menzies for Rebel News in Toronto. Well, folks, you might have heard of the name James Patok. He was a passenger on WestJet Flight 2702 on Monday evening. It was heading towards Montego Bay in Jamaica. And then, well, Mr. Patok got up and he said something that inferred or implied that he had the coronavirus. Unfortunately, the aircraft uh, took him seriously. Turns out he was just joking. Made a U-turn, returned to Toronto, much to the chagrin of 243 passengers. Well, anyways, we have tracked down Mr. Patak. He has consented to an interview, so I'm going to meet up with him outside this coffee shop here and get his side of this story. About two hours into the flight towards Jamaica, you got up and uh, you made a somewhat startling announcement. Uh, what I happened to say, just so everyone is clear, is uh, I stood up, I said, can I have everybody's attention? Uh, I have recently returned from Hunan province. I don't feel too well. Those are the exact words verbatim. No, at no time did I stand up and say I have the coronavirus, just so we clear that up. And, and James, had you actually visited that part of China? No, no. I was, uh, I was... I was saying something to elicit uh, some type of response in order for me to obtain it on my camera. I had a camera I was filming at, at the time. Now, I, I guess the, you said you didn't say that you um, had uh, contacted the coronavirus, although it's safe to say, James, that Wuhan province has been in the news uh, all over the world right now for the outbreak of coronavirus. You say that uh, province's name or that city's name and um, people automatically make the assumption that you've been at ground zero of the coronavirus. So w was that what you were hoping to do, plant the seed in people's heads that you had the virus? At no time was I trying to, elicit, uh, to get a response or to terrorize any of the people on the plane. If you listen to the statement, if you listen to what I said, I said uh, Wuhan. Wuhan province, I believe I might have said Wuhan, and I believe I said I'm not feeling well. That could infer I've just had Chinese food at one of our famous Wuhan restaurants here in Toronto. So I, it, for me to try and get it uh, on a rise on video, that was my, I think, something that I would consider not doing again. Uh, but when you bring that topic up, such a viral topic, it, it seems to freak everybody out. That was never my intent at all. Do you think, James, that, you know, it comes back down to this business of a viral video, and it, it, that seems to be the world we live in. Um, we have Crane Girl, we have Chair Girl, we have people. <laughs> well, we, we have people doing, you know, uh, forgive me, but really dumb things just so something goes viral, potentially dangerous things. The media perpetuates that. Because you guys are all now asking for interviews, because you post it on media, because it gets on social media, that perpetuates people wanting to do videos and I'm not saying that that I was uh, you know that I felt the need to because of the media what was done was a spur of the moment thing it was not premeditated and uh, all the all the uh, criticism that I'm receiving you know there's backlash from everybody uh, I have to take it there's no running from it so but James I think that's the point though you are a musician I, I have to admit I'm not familiar with your work but why not become famous and successful via the merits of your music as opposed to doing some crazy stunt on board an aircraft. Yeah, so the generations changed. Uh, people, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but musical talent doesn't sell you, uh, doesn't get sold. You need to bring attention to yourself, and that's just the way that this generation feels. And I can speak on you know, behalf of the, my generation. Growing up, it's an internet-based industry. Everything is videos online, and trying to create a video that spreads brings you back to a page to listen to music and grow content. But uh, it's the generation that we're in right now, and the media perpetuates that. It's all connected in a strange 
crazy way that I, I would say even in your generation may not make sense to you, but to the younger generation, it really does. It resonates with them. Uh, I'm, I'm, ho I'm hoping we can look back on this and laugh because, you know, there was nobody hurt. My intent was not to scare anyone. My intent certainly wasn't to cause a, a panic. And if I knew that the plane would be rerouted, that would have been uh, something that I avoided. Yeah. Uh. There's somebody uh, yelling, uh, loser from a car. <laughs> Maybe it's at me. Maybe it's you. Attention. No, he said, are you that Wuhan loser? But people <laughs> crave attention. You can see that. That's So, I mean, social media allows people to, like myself to take advantage of it. But, again, this was not premeditated. This was something that happened in the spur of the moment. And uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do it again. It was in poor taste. Well, you know, I'll, I'll take it your word about your apology and that if you could take that back that day in time, you wouldn't do that or you wouldn't phrase it in such a way. But... I'm just wondering, uh, and time will tell again about this too, James, could this have the opposite effect? Could people now go out of their way to say, oh no, that's that musician that did that terrible hoax that ruined the evening of 243 people, don't play his music, don't run his videos, could it, could it have a very adverse effect? Uh, you know what, that depends on how I, how I uh, continue this, this uh content release and how I continue with the court case there's a lot of variables but I'm not banking against myself I'm a gambling man and I put my money that I will blow up do you think you should do some jail time over this or maybe pay a substantial fine what would you think is fair I don't believe jailing someone is a rehab program I believe when you jail someone you you start their path on a on on a criminal path you you know they come out and they can't get a job they can't work anywhere so Canada has a, a, a job to prove beyond Regina, the court has a job to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that, that I am guilty of these charges that, that, uh, that are brought to me. And this is, again, something my legal team is going to have to deal with, but we're praying for the best. And uh, I'm, I'm not a, I don't have any uh, previous offenses. I have a clean criminal record as of now. So uh, only time will tell. Again, I, I, I throw myself at the mercy of the judge. Hey folks, have you heard? Rebel News is going on a cruise. Please go to rebelnewscruise.com and I hope to see you on our ship as we head to Alaska in July.